recommended by the United Nations, countries across the world conduct censuses every 5 to 10 years. A census counts the population of a nation, state or other geographic region while recording information on the population's characteristics such as age, gender and occupation. It may also include data on the region's agricultural and business sectors. The population census is necessary to get grassroots level data of a country that covers in a certain local boundaries. Most important thing is it will provide us population structure and all stock of housing relevant to that time period and that is the only source for getting such information of a country. In the Sri Lankan context, the first scientific census was conducted on 27th of March 1871 by the then Registrar General's office. It recorded a population of 2.4 million. Since then, censuses were conducted usually every 10 years with certain exceptions. With the establishment of the census department in the early 1940s, the population census was taken under the department's wing. The last census was conducted by the Department of Census and Statistics in 2012. The department also planned to conduct a population and housing census in 2021. However, it was postponed due to the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic in the country. However, last month, President Ranil Vikramasinghe issued a gazette notification ordering a census of population and housing to be conducted in Sri Lanka for the current year and 2024. Speaking to other Dirana English News, Director General of the Department of Census and Statistics, PMP Anrakumar, revealed that the department has already begun the population and housing census. According to the department, the census will be conducted in four stages, which include mapping, listing, enumeration, and data dissemination. The census, which is expected to be completed by the third quarter of next year, is projected to incur a cost of 2.8 billion rupees. We have already passed mapping stage. We have prepared 88 thousand census block maps for the country. It is in digital formats. We have already shared with some government organizations such as Home Affairs Ministry. Listing stage cover all the building of the country. We are labeling all the buildings and housing places. And same time we are identifying the head of person in household and their agricultural actors and also the person engaged in industries. Now we are conducting classes for the enumerators, those who are going for the field work for the listing operation. Field work is starting in October month. Now we are using tablet computers for the data collection. That is digital way we collect the data through 15,000 officers that data directly sent to the head office and we collect into the servers. And I think this operation will be successful in 2-3 months. Since 2020, Sri Lanka's socio-economic dynamics underwent major shifts due to the COVID-19 pandemic and the economic crisis. Against this backdrop, experts highlight the need for more data to ease the process of policy formulation to address multifaceted issues plaguing Sri Lanka's economy. Therefore, how can a census be important and advantageous to Sri Lanka in its current socio-economic context? What is really important for us to know is the overall picture in the country and that census would provide us with the data set that would help us to understand how the population has been affected in various ways. Now, as far as census is concerned, it's not a matter of collecting data about the entire population. It is also looking at how the population has been moving around. As you know, mobility of people is very important when we have a census being conducted because if you have rural urban migration uh, either way and then also migration of people from the country to the outside world all these are very very significant and these things have to be captured the Sri Lanka population has been moving more and more in the direction of urban centers over the last 20 or 30 years and now of course we have a situation where the city urban population has been very much affected by not only COVID but also by the economic crisis and I think this particular demographic change can be captured very clearly once we have the data coming from the census. So all look forward to having this census data and that would help us not only to understand the situation but also to figure out how to really respond to these changes if they are negative and if they are also positive of course we will be able to build on those positive changes that are taking place. With the economic crisis the poverty rate in Sri Lanka is estimated to have doubled last year. The crisis added 2.5 million more poor people, meaning around 5 million people need social welfare assistance. 
with up-to-date statistics, the government and authorities will have more information in order to uplift the standards of these poor people by social development programs. Then, the authorities must use the data obtained from the new census in order to take effective and more informed decisions.